do subscribe to ekeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos hello friends in this video we are going to study about borden tubes which are used for the measurement of pressure here we are going to study the principle of working of borden tubes the various types of borden tubes their advantages disadvantages and their applications so let us start with our topic as i have said that borden tubes they are used for the measurement of pressure they are the primary sensing elements means they are going to measure the pressure at the primary stage of measurement means at the primary level of the measurement we can use the borden tubes for the measurement of pressure now borden tubes they consist of they are made up of elastic material and this elastic material is going to convert the pressure into a mechanical displacement so we are going to measure the pressure by measuring the displacement and this displacement can be either directly calibrated in terms of pressure or it can be given to an electrical transducer which is going to convert this displacement into an electrical signal like either a voltage or a current so here we are going to uh, means we can say that borden tubes they are not directly measuring the pressure they are measuring pressure in terms of the displacement okay and this displacement can be either directly measure or it can be converted into an electrical signal so that it that electrical signal can be further applied to the other stages of the measurement so borden tubes they measure pressure by converting it into a displacement and displacement is then converted into an electrical signal either voltage or current by using an electrical transducer so borden tubes they are also known as the pressure sensitive primary devices as i have said here that it is a primary sensing element so we can say that borden tube it is a type of primary sensitive pressure devices so borden tube we can say that it is a type of pressure sensitive primary device or uh, we can also say that it is a type of force summing device okay now let us see the principle of working of the borden tubes that how these borden tubes they convert the pressure into the mechanical displacement
so the principle of working of Borden tubes is that here the fluid whose pressure we want to measure that is going to press the pressure sensitive element means we will be having the Borden tube on one side of the Borden tube the fluid whose pressure we want to measure that will be allowed to enter that tube now due to the pressure of the fluid the Borden tube it is going to move okay it is going to change its shape okay so the pressure sensitive element is going to be pressed and since this element is an elastic member it is made up of an elastic material so it is going to deflect so due to the pressure of the fluid the elastic material through which the tube is made up of that elastic material is going to either expand or it is going to contract means it is going to change its shape and due to that change in shape a mechanical displacement will occur okay so in this way the pressure is converted into a mechanical displacement And the displacement which is caused in the tube or in the elastic material, that displacement is proportional to the pressure applied. Okay. So we can say that displacement is directly proportional to the pressure. Now this displacement is converted into an electrical signal by the electrical transducer. So displacement is proportional to the pressure applied. Displacement is measured with the help of electrical transducer means it is converted into an electrical signal. Output of the electrical transducer is proportional to the displacement and displacement is proportional to pressure. So we can say that output of electrical transducer is proportional to the applied pressure. So if in a flow chart we describe this principle of working of Borden tube, displacement First, the pressure is going to create the displacement of the elastic material and this displacement is converted into an electrical signal by the electrical transducer. So we can say that this pressure and electrical signal they are proportional to each other or we can say output of the electrical transducer is proportional to the applied pressure. So on this principle the Borden tubes they measure the pressure. Now let us come to the construction of the Borden tubes. If we talk about the shape of the Borden tubes, the Borden tubes they come in uh, the variety of types. So the Borden tubes they come in different forms or in different shapes we can say. So there are four types of shapes, C type Borden tube, helical type, spiral type and twisted tube type.
Now the Bowden tubes they are made up of an elliptically flattened tube which is bent in such a way so that it is producing these different shapes C type, spiral, helical, twisted tube. So different shapes are produced because it is made up of an elliptically flattened tube. Okay, it is in the form of a tube which is bent in the uh, bent to form different types of shapes. Now one end of the Bowden tube it is sealed and one end is open. The end which is open to that open end the pressure is being applied and uh, to the closed end we have attached an pointer. So due to the pressure the Bowden tube it is going to change its shape and that change in the display or we can say the displacement is going to move the pointer. So here we can say that one end is closed and the other end is open for the fluid to enter into the Bowden tube. Now let us see the diagram for the Bowden tube that how its shape is. So this is the simple type of or we can say it is the C type of Bowden tube. Here you can see that the shape of the Bowden tube is a C shape. So it is the first type of Bowden tube which is the C type of Bowden tube. In this Bowden tube you can see that one end of the tube is open and the other uh, end is sealed and the end which is sealed the displacement will occur to that end and the other end which is open the pressure which we want to measure is applied to this end. Now when the fluid whose pressure we want to measure it is going to allow to enter through this open end when this fluid uh, enters this tube it is going to apply some pressure over this elastic material and due to that pressure this elastic material is going to deflect okay so this c type of Bowden tube it is going to change its shape it is going to deflect in some direction and this deflection will going to cause the movement of this pointer over the calibrated scale so the displacement which is caused in this tip or the uh, sealed end of the Bowden tube that is going to be indicated over the calibrated 
scale. So pressure is converted into the displacement which can be read from the scale and also if we um, if we connect this Bowden tube with an electrical transducer so that displacement can also be converted into an electrical signal we can get an electrical output and that output will be proportional to the pressure applied. So the amount of movement of the Bowden tube or the amount of displacement caused in this sealed end that is proportional to the pressure of the fluid which is inside the Bowden tube. So in this way the Bowden tube it converts the pressure into the displacement and it measures the pressure of the fluids. So if we describe the working of the Bowden tubes in terms of a flow chart, first the fluid whose pressure we want to measure, it enters the tube from the open end of the tube and uh, due to this pressure of the fluid, the tube is going to straighten out. Okay, the C type of Bowden tube is going to straighten up and this straightening of the tube causes the movement of the free end and as the free end moves the displacement will be caused and this displacement is amplified through the mechanical linkages you can see in the diagram we are having a link and then geared sector and pinion arrangement so this displacement will be amplified through these mechanical linkages and this displacement causes the movement of the pointer on a scale which is calibrated in terms of the pressure. Also this displacement may be applied to an electrical transducer to produce an electrical output which is also proportional to the fluid pressure. So in this way the Bowden tube they measure the pressure of the fluids. Now if we talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the Bowden tubes, the Bowden tubes they have several types of advantages, they are having several advantages which include the low cost, simple construction, high pressure range, good accuracy, So advantages of Bowden tubes include their low cost, simple construction, high pressure range, good accuracy. Also, they give us improved designs at the pressure for the maximum safety because here if the pressure is increased to a very high range then also expand uh, all this uh, elastic material is going to burst out so it gives us safety at high pressure ranges and the greatest advantage is that it is easily adapted for the designs for obtaining the electrical outputs so if we want that uh, in the measurement system we want an electrical output Output so we can use the Bowden tubes they are easily adaptable in that type of environment and give us large deflections if we talk about the disadvantages
The disadvantages are that in the Bowden tube they are having low spring gradient which are going to, uh, which limits their use for the precision measurements. So for the cases where precision measurement of pressure is to be used due to the low spring gradient of Bowden tubes we cannot use them. Also another disadvantage is that they are susceptible to shocks and vibrations and due to that they are subject to hysteresis. So these are the advantages and disadvantages of the Bowden tube. said that the Bowden tubes it comes in different shapes and designs like C type, helical, spiral type and twisted tube type. So let us study these types of Bowden tubes one by one. First we will start with the C type of Bowden tube. We have already seen the diagram for the C type of Bowden tube. Okay. Now here if we see the cross section of the tube, it is like Here XX is written, so if we are going to cut this C type of Bowden tube, its normal cross section will be like this. So this was the C type of Bowden tube, okay. Here you can see that the arc, it is in the shape of C. So it is called a C type Bowden tube, which is having an angle of 250 degree, okay. This uh, tube is bent at an angle of 250 degree. So these C type of Bowden tube, they are most widely used for the uh, local indication of the pressure but also they are used for the pressure transmission and control applications. So it is used for local indication but also used for pressure transmission and control applications and the, if we see the cross section of the C type Bowden tube then it is oval in cross section which is formed into an arc of 250 degrees. Now if we see the geometrical section of this C type of Bowden tube. It is like. So this is the geometrical section of the C type of Bowden tube. Here you can see that when it is an arc which is having a radius from the center R. 
and this arc is bended over an angle of 250 degree to form the C shape. Now A is the length of the arc and if we cro uh, cut it cross sectionally this is the cross sectional uh, section of the Bowden tube. Now in this cross sectional section you can see that X is the length, T is the thickness, Y is the width. Now if we defined the when the pressure the fluid whose pressure we want to measure it is going to enter this tube this tip of the tube is going to get displaced so let us suppose that this displacement is del a so let us see that how this displacement is related with the pressure okay so del a that is the movement of the tip or we can say the displacement of the tip is del a a is the length of the arc p is the pressure e is the elastic uh, modulus of elasticity r is the radius of the arc t is the thickness of the tube x is the length of the tube and y is the width of the tube and here you can see that this displacement and pressure they are long linear the relationship between the displacement of the tip and the applied pressure it is non-linear here we are having the powers as 0 0.2 0 0.33 and 3 so in the C type of Bowden tube, the relationship between the displacement and the applied pressure is non-linear. However, this non-linear relationship can be converted into a linear relationship by the uh, use of the gear and pinion arrangement or due to the uh, or by the use of the mechanical linkages. So as there is a non-linear relationship between displacement and pressure, so for each pressure applied or each pressure increment, it is not going to produce a corresponding movement of the tip of the tube. Okay. And this non-linear relationship can be converted into linear relationship by the use of the mechanical linkages. Now if we talk about the accuracy of the C type of Bowden tubes So the C type of Bowden tube, they, their accuracy, it varies from plus minus 0 0.5 to 2% or more poorer than that. So we can say that C type Bowden tube, they are less accurate and their normal accuracy is plus minus 1%. Now the next type of uh, Bowden tubes or the next shape in which the Bowden tubes come is the spiral shape. In the C type of Bowden tube, we have seen that the uh, displacement and the pressure, they are non-linear, their relationship is non-linear. Also, the thickness of the wall is also non-linearly related with the displacement. So, if we increase the uh, uh, increase the length of the arc, here we have the, we in that uh, 
C type of Bowden tube we were having the length of the arc as A. So if we increase this length of the arc and uh, uh, we change the shape of the tube then we can get a more linear relationship between the displacement and the pressure. So in the spiral type of Bowden tubes the length of the arc is increased by making the Bowden tube in the form of a spiral. So to make a linear relationship between the displacement and pressure the length of the arc is increased and when the angle through which the arc is bent it reaches 360 degree its length is increased. So its length can be increased by doing two things either to form the tube in the form of a spiral or in the form of a helix. So in the spiral and helix type of Bowden tubes there is a linear relationship between the displacement and the applied pressure. Let's see the diagram for the spiral type of Bowden tube. So this is the spiral type of Bowden tube. You can see that the length of the tube has been increased. Okay. And uh, the uh, tube is being bent over an angle of 360 degree. Okay. So by increasing the length of the tube, the relationship between displacement and pressure can be made linear. Okay. So if we want an increased displacement of the free end then it can be obtained by increasing the number of turns just like in the spiral and the helix type. So due to the increase in the number of turns the need for the uh, uh, gearing arrangement the mechanical linkages that will be uh, replaced that will be neglected there will be no need for the mechanical linkages because in the C type of Bowden tube the mechanical linkages were used to get the linear relation. Now here the linear relationship is obtained by increasing the number of the turns so there will be no need of the mechanical linkages and also the friction problems which are occurring due to the presence of the mechanical parts that will also be reduced.
so the backlash problem and the hysteresis problem which were working uh, which were coming out due to the presence of the geared sector and pinion arrangement because when mechanical parts they rub over each other friction also occurs and also wear and tear can occur and due to that errors can occur in the instrument so due to there is no need of these type of arrangements so backlash and hysteresis and uh, friction problems all will be eliminated in the case of spiral and the helix type now when the fluid whose pressure we want to measure it is allowed to enter the spiral type of Bowden tube it is going to uncoil itself because earlier it is in the shape of a spiral as soon as the fluid starts flowing in it so due to the pressure of the fluid it starts uncoiling itself so by measuring the uh, displacement of the coil because in the inner end of the spiral tube it is connected with the pointer which is moving over a scale so when it starts uncoiling itself the pointer also starts moving over the scale so the pressure uh, and the displacement they can be measured and the displacement of the pointer will be proportional to the uh, movement of the pointer okay displacement is proportional to the pressure applied to the tube so this was the spiral type of Bowden tube. Next comes the helical type. The helical type of Bowden tube is just similar to the spiral type. The difference is that the tube is in the shape of a helix. So this is the helical type of Bowden tube here. The shape of the Bowden tube is in the helix. So here also we are having the number of turns. Now the displacement of the tip as compared to the spiral type of Bowden tube, the displacement of the tip will be more in the case of helix. Now here the central shaft is used within the helical element here you can see that in the mid of it we are having a central shaft and this shaft is attached with the pointer and pointer is driven by the connecting links which are connected with the central shaft means around that central shaft the helix is being formed and to that central shaft with the help of mechanical linkages the pointer is being connected so as the fluid is uh, entered into the helix it is going to uncoil that helical shape okay helix is going to uncoil itself so due to that the pointer will be moved and the pointer of the, uh, is going to move over the scale and from that scale we can read the displacement and displacement is proportional to the 
pressure so the working of the helical and the spiral type of bowden tubes it is similar in both these we are having the uh, number of turns have been increased and by increasing that number of turns we have avoided the presence of the gear and pinion arrangement okay now if we talk about the advantages of this helical type of bowden tube it has the advantage that it has high range capabilities it is it's it is stable in the fluctuating pressure applications and adaptable for high pressure service so when we are doing the measurement of the pressure which is in a very high range then for that high pressures the helical type of bowden tube is used and for lower pressure ranges the c type of bowden tubes are used now if we talk about the material of which the bowden tubes are made up of as i have said that bowden tubes they are made up of elastic materials so bowden tubes they are made up of materials like brass alloy steel stainless steel bronze phosphor bronze beryllium copper k monel monel and nickel span c so different materials can be used depending upon the type of pressure range or the elastic character or the characteristics of this elastic material okay because in the formula also you have seen that we are using the e that is the modulus of elasticity so according to the elastic characteristics which are suitable for the pressure range for the medium Uh, and for the type of measurement system according to that the bowden tube and the different materials are used like this phosphor bronze phosphor bronze it is used where we are use having the low pressure applications and also where the environment is non corrosive corrosion is not occurring in that type of environment phosphor bronze is used now where the problem of uh, corrosion is occurring at that uh, in those cases stainless steel and monel are used okay so depending upon the type of application for which we are using the bowden tube according to that the material is being used now comes the pressure ranges for which the different types of bowden tubes they can be used we were having c type helical and the spiral type of bowden tube so helical uh, c type of bowden tube it is used for the pressure measurement which are ranging in the range from vacuum to about 700 mega pascal pascal is the unit for the pressure for the spiral bowden tubes the pressure range is vacuum to 30 mega pascal and for helical it is 1.5 mega pascal to 550 mega pascal so these are the pressure ranges in which the three types of bowden tubes they can be used 
so in this video we studied about the pressure measurement device Bowden tube which is a primary sensing element used for the measurement of pressure it converts the pressure into the displacement and then displacement can also be converted into an electrical signal we see uh, we saw here the principle of working the construction the types of Bowden tubes we studied in detail the three types C type helical and the spiral type of Bowden tube also we saw here the disadvantages and the advantages along Along with the applications of the Bowden tube that for what pressure ranges we can use the different types of Bowden tubes. So I hope that this topic is now clear to you. Thank you.